first name by no means least, um, my own first man, Eamon O'Shea, um, who is a professor of economics um, at NUI Galway. Um, again, um, a three minute insight in relation to um, and how you think perhaps we, um, we can protect the, uh, the welfare state and making sure that we protect the environment. Yeah. Um, I think the, the first thing uh, I was thinking about the conference and the, the, the title, the ideas title, because in 1936, John Maynard Keynes wrote the General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, and uh, which basically spawned Keynesian economics for the next 30, 40 years. And that, that grew from an idea, it grew from a, the recession, the 20, 1929 recession, and that idea was a powerful transformation of the European economy uh, in the 1950s. So this conference of ideas is critical, I think, to sort the of development of, of, of recovery. So about the welfare state, I think the important point that any economist has to make at the beginning, that the, the biggest contribution to protecting welfare is economic growth. And I think this is a fundamental issue in terms of how we think about, uh, you know, uh, the, the sort of uh, the welfare state is that, and economic growth depends, I think, on making things, as Jim says, and I think that's one fundamental message I think we've got to get back to thinking about, it's producing things that people want. I think, I think that message, I think, has to be reinforced again and again in the small open economy uh, and, uh, for, for economic growth. The point about the welfare state and the point about protecting vulnerable people, I think there is a necessity to think of a parallel development between economy and society. And I think we've lost that relationship a little bit uh, in the past 10 years. That we saw the economy as, as defining us. And I think it's... it's the economy is critical, as we all know, in terms of job creation. I've just said that. But I think it's also critical to think that we live in societies and we live in communities. And I think if we don't see ourselves as being uh, social, as being part of relationships, then I think it's, it's almost impossible to bring uh, the necessary um, partnership, the necessary spirit, the necessary uh, will for uh, an economy to succeed. Because if you isolate and if, and if you marginalize, and if you regionalize, uh, then I think you can't grow. And I think this is a fundamental message for, our, for, 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 for the development of ourselves as a people. That, that I think you've got to see society and economy as being part of the same the kind, one and the other. And I think we need to get back to thinking about that. We need to, we, we particularly need now, because I'm picking up over the past year a desire for at a greater degree of equality, of egalitarianism, than perhaps uh, has been there in the past. Now, you know, we need to have structures where people take risks, we need to have structures where people get rewarded for what they do. But I think we also need some relationship to what people think is fair. And I think that notion of fairness is a powerful notion right now in, the, in, in, in Ireland. And I think we can harness it actually for productive purposes. Uh, and I think this is the message that I would be, be, be asking or be saying that we need to, to harness that concept of fairness for productive purposes and that relationship between economy and society and, 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 and that should be a fundamental driving force. In the context of work and unemployment and, and fairness, I think uh, we need to think about fundamentally work in many different ways. Uh, I work a lot in the area of ageing and older people and social entrepreneurship with respect to older people and involved in projects to do with technology and older people. I think there is a huge, a huge area where we can mobilize the desire of people to work uh, in the, uh, within communities, within the welfare state, uh, within local communities to solve issues to do with uh, aging, disability, uh, public infrastructure, uh, social development, uh, economic development in small towns and so on. But I think we need to separate our own notions of seeing, of seeing uh, work as being getting paid a, a certain wage, being unemployed, simply being getting an allowance at the end of the week. We need to think about how we work flexibly, how we utilize people on the margins, how we utilize uh, people to create things that are valuable and valued within societies. At the same time as we have a parallel uh, productive economy or manufacturing economy, this is not to replace economic growth, but it's a parallel development for society to evolve properly. 
Uh, and I think for that to happen, building on the sort of uh, the, the, the thoughts earlier, I think we've got to have not only leadership at a national level, but leadership at, at, at regional and local levels. Uh, and not only that, but we've got to have engagement uh, and real engagement with people to see this as a project that involves everybody. And I think for that, if that happens, we will then have the solidarity that will be necessary to see it through some very difficult times in the next year, two years, in terms of people losing jobs. Because what this country does not need, I think, is the marginalization of people uh, outside of the productive economic workforce. I think this is a critical parallel development that needs to happen that will mobilize all our people, young, old, uh, uh, and, and people who have high level skills and people who don't have high level skills. And I think if we can manage to do that, we will have a productive economy and a caring society. Okay, thank you very much.